Hey, Heather. How are you? Fantastic. Good. Where I would like to start is for you to tell your backstory of how you have found your way into this bio-tuning world. In 2020 is when I had the opportunity to become a Reiki master, and that was on my radar for 10 years prior after my first Reiki healing session. And I just was really drawn to it and fascinated by the magic behind it. And I was all about it and read books about it. But that was just a passion on the side that I was curious about. But one day I put it on my vision board that I wanted to be a Reiki practitioner because I thought it sounded hella cool. And not surprisingly, the next year, the opportunity presented itself during the shutdown to put all my day job stuff to the side for a little bit and seize the opportunity to do the three part Reiki series. That is when really the world opened up and like they say, when you are aligned and in tune, all of the people and opportunities start finding you. Facebook ads started finding me, Mind Valley <laughs> classes started finding me. And I was just a sponge, just absorbing everything that I could. And I wanted to know the science behind everything because that's how my mind works. I had no intention of being a practitioner. I just wanted to learn it for the sake of personal growth and learning. Fast forward a couple of years and I had an opportunity to start practicing Reiki. As I began to work more and more with the people that were coming in to see me, I started noticing trends and just really appreciating the opportunity to hold space for people filled me up. And I noticed that while I, while I was conducting the healing, the, the Reiki and intuitive healing sessions, and I would incorporate sound healing like crystal bowls and tuning forks, it really filled me up with this bliss and joy in my chest that I would leave with and exude for the rest of the day. And people were noticing changes in me and saying that I look different and what was I doing and I mean it's just it's just so true what they say that you know when you're changing the inside it really changes the outside mm -hmm. appearance. Fast forward a little bit and Brooke Rodriguez who is my Reiki master and who owns this lovely studio A Touch of Meriki. She has been doing biofill tuning and crystal bowl sound journeys also and so I followed her lead and wanted to find out what that looked like to be a certified biofill tuning practitioner. And so you see behind us all of these tuning forks. And um, if you dive into the science behind that and geek out on that, it really is just fascinating when you think of the fact that we are electric. So it makes sense that we, are, we have a field just like the earth and the sun and the moon and everything has atmospheric fields. We have fields, we are nature, we are affected by frequencies. There is a frequency of the earth that we are connected to at our negative pole, the feet, the positive pole, the cosmos, we are electromagnetic. So it makes sense that when you start thinking about the frequencies that surround us, words, symbols, emotions, colors, smells, everything that you can think of has a frequency that is getting captured in your field. Furthermore, you start thinking about the fact that every single experience you've ever had, every stress, disease, trauma, positive or negative in your mind experience stored in your field. So what really fascinates me about biofield tuning is that by combing your field, and I'm probably jumping ahead, but your, your field is a tor toroidal field, out your head, around your body, six feet on either side, up in between your legs and in. Starting with gestation and birth at the outer edges, we comb your field from the outside in, and we're essentially working through your biological age and life 
and where we encounter any resistance in the fork, you can feel the resistance, you can also hear it in the sound that the forks are making. You don't have to name it or talk about it or anything like that. You just have to sit with it, breathe in center, making sure that anything that's coming up and through me is getting released so I'm not holding on to any of that. And just again, holding space for whoever I'm working with in their field. And then gradually as the frequency of the fork attrains or attunes with the field, it will release and the field will continue, the fork will continue to move in. So field, same as aura, different as aura, different word, are we, what are we affecting here? I have never heard them used interchangeably. They are different as far as I can tell. There are similar concepts. The aura, if you kind of think of it as your spacesuit and also your antenna, it's protecting you. You're also picking up sensitivities around you from it, mm -hmm. but it is also connecting you to spirit or yeah. the cosmos. Similarly, but not identically, your field is resonating around you in both directions in biofield tuning. It's chakra and meridian focused, whereas Reiki is really purely chakra focused. Um, the biofield tuning is focused on activating your ascending and descending central channels, which are your two meridians that are essentially your river of chi that the other 12 meridians tap into and feed. So by bolstering that, you're increasing your vitality, you're building resilience, and that's strengthening this toroidal field that's going both out and around, down and up and around simultaneously. So how do you start a bio-tuning <clears throat> session? After starting to slow your breath, and relax, we cleanse and ground the energies of ourself and our client, which is something that we should all be doing every day. Um, oh yes. Anyway, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's a whole nother conversation <laughs> that we can have. But the first thing we want to do is intentionally call back all of, you know, the parts of ourselves so that we're fully present. Intentionally take in fresh air, breathe out what energies no longer serve us, ground. And then we start by activating some different points on the body, the feet, the knees, the hips, the sternum, and lung and stomach points here, and the crown. We're basically activating acupressure points on the body. And what I find is the core reason for that is to pull you into your body, to start getting you noticing. Just You're just activating these points, right? It's just, it's a great place to start because typically we're all we running around out of our, our body. day uh -huh. up here, right? So it's a great place to just help settle in and start paying attention and being aware. Then what we do using the weighted forks for the activation points, the bottom of the feet, the knees, the hips, the sternum, here, here, just a couple seconds. And it's at a specific hertz. Do they require you to use like a certain vibration or are they saying like you could use any vibration as long as it's a weighted fork? Well, by, within biofield tuning, they're gonna have some different recommendations for you, but it's not a hard and fast number that you have to use a certain fork at a certain frequency at a certain time. Once you go through the training, you understand which ones are a little bit better for for what purposes, but ultimately, like with Reiki, a lot of it is intention and intuition. So these are a Schumann pair, actually. So you can see that the weighted forks have these on the top of them, right? Versus the unweighted. Do not. You can use them on this end. You can put a crystal at the bottom to 
exaggerate or amplify. Also, you can listen to them together. Mm -hmm. And if you put them together, you kind of feel a buzz that makes the Schumann resonance 6.83 hertz, which is the Earth's heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So, quick reminder that we are connected to the Earth through the bottoms of our feet, which is why earthing. And is grounding so, has become so popular. Yeah, yeah we sense that nervous so system. And natural. Not only can we flush out the energies that no longer serve, but certainly by connecting and attuning and picking up the Earth's frequency, we're going to be more aligned. That was the beginning of that, of the answer to that question. question. I say keep going. What, like, what can we experience in that bio-tuning session? Like, how does it continue? Really? So, after the activation of the points, what I do is work on connecting, activating your ascending central channel, starting at your feet, finding your earth star, which should be a foot below your feet but generally has a way of tucking in closer to your ankles unless we're spending a whole bunch of time barefoot in soil gardening, which so few people are doing. Yeah. It kind of tucks in like a turtle a little bit. So what I do is <clears throat> kind of come in here and try to find it. And by finding it, I mean I'll start to feel some resistance with this. Kind of like it's pushing back, something's pushing back on it. And so that's where the Earth Star is residing at the moment. And I just keep striking and holding until it's ready to move and release. And I'll guide it down to where I feel it naturally stop, about a foot beneath your feet. And then I will pivot and begin to activate the ascending central channel by directing that current and charging it, grounding it first, activating it up and imagining the toroidal field being amplified and boosted. Then I'll come around and activate your sun star, strike it, find it, continue to strike it and guide it until it stops again, generally about the same distance above the head as it's gonna be below the feet. And then again, pivot, activate the descending central channel. With the toroidal field, mm -hmm. do some people have one that doesn't flow in one direction or the other? No. Okay, so everyone's flowing. Mm -hmm. Are there fast and slow flowers? There are blockages that some people are more in tuned to recognize intuitively. When somebody has worked on me in the past, they sense that there is some blockage here, for example, and all of this is on any given day at any point in time, right? It's not a long-term permanent assessment, but they notice that there's just some block, and so you're just striking and holding, striking and holding, and again, you're getting feedback from the sound that it's making, that it's still not quite cleared. If I'm not getting an obvious sign or knowing that there's something going on somewhere for me to put focus on, I'm honing in to listen to the sound of the forks. And as you've experienced, there does become a time where it becomes louder and brighter and very clear. And then you know everything is I'll clear for take. <laughs> So we've got the fields flowing. Mm -hmm. then, Next we're, step. then what we're ready to do, we use a pendulum as a neutral way to ask the field which chakra and which side of the body is asking for attention for that particular session. Again, this is a point in time. It's not a sign that anything is wrong. There's certainly no cause for alarm. It's just a, hey, this is going on over here in this spot. I think today and now would be a really good time for you to comb over here. With biofield tuning, one of the cool differences too is that we work with the chakras of the feet and the knees before we get to the root. 
So we hold it each, over each one of the chakras. If we get a line, then that tells us, all right, check the right and the left side. One of the sides will generally have a line. One of them will have a circle. The ones that have the line are the areas. That's telling us that it wants to be worked. And in my experience with my sessions, there are certain areas in the body that correlate to specific themes in our lives that mm -hmm. then either need attention or are creating the blockages. Mm -hmm. The right foot is different than the left foot. So Eileen McCusick has created from her all of her experiences a biofield anatomy map and it shows different sides of the body correlate with masculine and feminine energies different chakras on different sides correlate to different patterns that are going on in our life or in our field. So what's really fun about this is that once the pendulum tells us which area and part of the field that we want to comb, we can look at the map and just ask. This generally relates to patterns related to feeling stuck, mired, unable to move forward. Does that resonate for you? And almost always the person's like oh my gosh ding 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 that's exactly what's going on <laughs> in my life you know or you know feelings of grief and sadness and unable to you know be able to move forward from that or yeah the one of the sides has more to do with the past one of them has more to do with looking forward into the future you know uncertainty apprehension about next steps to take versus feeling like they're being pulled back and they're just kind of weighted down with things that have gone on in the past. So that's a really fascinating awareness mm -hmm. to have. We don't spend a lot of time diving into that because it's not therapy. <laughs> but I will say that studies are happening now where they're taking scientific measurements before and after the sessions and doing these things very formulaically and scientifically so that they can prove what the practitioners already know which we is all by, need proof by combing the field in certain places people are having very instant uh, resolutions and results so I have heard it said that one to three I'm getting chills one to three tuning sessions can replace decades of talk therapy without having to identify name and certainly not talk about what the issue is which is fantastic when you think about how much trauma and and trauma with a big T or a little t even it could be bullying and things that you've kind of been conditioned to dismiss to big obvious horrible trauma or generational trauma something that your parents or grandparents are tackling something that your son or daughter is tackling that is in your field too so it's just so magical and it's so hard for our mind something like to that. grasp it our mind can't grasp it so we can hardly talk about it like we can say like we even think this exists which it takes a long people to get to the point to even admit that what my grandmother went through which I was not present for is affecting me and it's hard for us to grasp and acknowledge it and so then when you go into talk therapy and you're like, why do I keep bringing, why, why am I karmically drawn to men that abuse me? Why am I karmically upset if I don't have food in my bag? I have to have snacks with me all the time to feel safe, but I've been fed my whole life. Or, but then you realize that generationally this is happening. Doing biofield tuning mm -hmm. can do that without you having to grasp and understand the magic that we currently can't grasp and understand but I do think it's coming I do think yeah. people are going to wake up one day and be like oh, I see it yeah I'm in touch with my spirit guides or they're telling me stories or showing me images mm -hmm. and I believe that my dreams do mean something and they're coming from somewhere because yeah. thoughts have vibration well and don't you think that when the earth that we're connected to is raising in vibration that's triggering and more of an awareness of what's going on. I mean, you can't tell me that all the things happening in the world just started happening. We're just now starting to see them and be aware of them, right? And then certainly there's a 
there's a flip side to that too is it's great that we're raising awareness and learning these truths that then we can learn how we feel about them and do something about it and step into our power and find our voice and all those beautiful things but the other side of the coin is the realization that because we're all interconnected like this mycelium network you know of plants in nature because we are nature we're feeling chaos and fear and despair and all the horrible things that are happening on the other side of the world and what I'm realizing is that people are coming in that are feeling anxiety or fear or sadness for not any obvious reason and that's why and again, you don't have to know exactly what the reason or the cause is. All you need to know is that there's a way to feel better. There's a way to use your intention and awareness to know what's yours, know what's not yours, know how to release it, how to bolster your field, and start operating on a day-to-day -day basis with, you know, from more of a position of power, but also return to some joy and hope, you know? And this is why when you come into session, is you go in there and you're like, I just feel good. I feel good when I leave. And I laid there. I laid there for 60 minutes, 90 minutes, whatever it ends up being, right? And you don't really do nothing. And then you come out and you're like, I feel more vibrant i feel more alive and at the same time i am able to feel more relaxed and settled in life in general you're so, resetting well i don't know if it's official to say that you're resetting your central nervous system but you're certainly relaxing it in a way that deep meditation would mm -hmm. and allowing your body to heal itself come back into harmony and again the premise the underlying premise is that our bodies are not designed to create all of this horrible disease and pain. Our bodies are trying to tell us that there is discord <sighs> and incoherence in it. And, and so we're not listening. By relaxing your nervous system, by balancing your chakras and un uh, unblocking your meridians, you're allowing your chi, your life force, your prana, to move and do what we're designed to do, which is stay optimized and healthy and heal ourselves. All these meridians and organs are supervising and providing intelligence to our various organs in our body. So I think that's really amazing too, because when you think about Western medicine, they're just band-aiding problems with pills for pain management or surgeries or physical therapy. This is really getting to the heart of the root issue, which is not just helping take the pain away, but restoring your body to a place where it can heal, magically heal itself. And you don't have to have any pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do think, because I meditate on my own, and it is much more enjoyable to come in <laughs> and have the assistance mm -hmm. of vibrations and obviously the connection of being with another soul doing that work sure, around you. Yeah. It, yeah. it is, a, it's a treat. It's a spa day for your body, soul, and mind mm -hmm. for sure. That's a good point, actually, because I think that since energy healing is such a new concept to people, they don't really know what to expect because it is relaxing and spa-like, but you're fully clothed. It's, it's a, a little bit more clinical in a sense. It's a little bit, I tell people, it's a little bit more like acupuncture. You know, you're not generally tipping acupuncturists. You're coming in, you're paying for a session, it's, it's more clinical. They assess you, you talk about it, you know, they're clearing your blockages by putting the needles and the points. Then you leave and you feel better. Mm -hmm. This sort of, I love the marriage of that aspect um, with, with the spa relaxation 
mindful, you know, not that acupuncture doesn't drop you into that, you know, very trance-like state, <laughs> for sure, but um, it's a really beautiful combination of those things. Yeah. I go on a side story of, like, me going to acupuncture and being in the experience of, hey, what were you doing last Tuesday? You, you, they don't come into it. And you, you can find those magical acupuncturists that do bring in that mind-body experience of it. But a lot of them do. Just the needle's going to do the work, and they don't bring your mind into being aware of what's happening. They're doing it. You're not involved. And so for me being in the room and being able to ask you questions of I feeling a tingling in my left side and you know <laughs> things are moving what's going on mm -hmm. and having that experience is giving me the opportunity to mm -hmm. to start to take charge of my own healing and not just putting mm -hmm. the weight of it on someone else that is such an important point I'm so glad that you said that because I want to make sure to call out the fact that healing practitioners in the energy healing space uh, at least it is part of our education and training to know that we are not healers we might call ourselves healers or healing practitioners it is not our responsibility to heal or even diagnose so what we're doing is holding a space and we're working very intentionally and lovingly with universal life force energy to help balance the chakras, harmonize your energy systems, and work with you. And I really feel strongly that in that communication and over time, people that are coming to me and other energy healers, I would hope, are learning that you are empowering yourself by recognizing what your energy feels like, having a relationship with your body, asking your body why certain little things are starting to hurt that weren't there before, and just recognizing that there's an intelligence in the body. And like you had said before, if there's a pain or, some, or a discomfort or something, it's a sign that it's trying to tell you something not to dismiss it and power through it. So after a session, how do we come out of it? What can we expect? As we wind down the session itself, what I like to remind people is that you have a lot of energy that's been swirling around, a lot of cellular activation and activity that's been going on during the session as well. So it's super important not only to move very slowly and not surround yourself with too much stimulus. Don't go grocery shopping. Definitely don't go to Costco. Try not to turn on the news. You know, just really try to settle into a nice relaxing evening. It's super important to put your feet, if not your whole body, in some salt water some Epsom salt, some sea salt. You can put essential oil in there if you like. And just, it really helps pull the energies out of your body that you've been releasing, like a detox. Otherwise, sometimes people start feeling like, I would say like cold-like symptoms. It doesn't happen all the time, but it can, so the salt really helps get ahead of that. If you can put your feet in sand or on grass, or in salt water, that's even better. We have the luxury of um, having some salt water around here. And then for the next, oh, well, and then certainly drink a lot of water like any body work or energy work, right? We wanna just keep flushing out our system, the lymph system. For the next 48 hours, you're gonna have all of this energy continue to be really moving through your body. I call it a chi high. You're just, like feeling super great and things are moving there is uh, it's not uncommon I will say to experience emotions that were previously suppressed that have surfaced and so if you find yourself suddenly crying during commercials or getting really angry or I mean you could just be driving down the freeway and just feel a surge of something don't freak out. It's totally natural. Lean into it. 
we have been programmed to swallow it, suppress it, ignore it, and uh, this is the work. This is the work for when it shows up to imagine just like a wave starting to come up and crest, don't push it back into your body, let it come up, crest, and break, and then it's gone. Then it's out, <sighs> right? So, gentle reminder that the disease and illness is coming from suppressed emotions and frequencies that we have not released and expressed. This is what somatic healing is all about, getting the trauma out of your body. This is a way that we're doing this in a very gentle way. So when it shows up, lean in, let it break, flush it out, and then we can move on. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Let the wave break and you don't have to face the crest again. Yes. Oof, let it wash away. Yeah. You got to experience it to just let it go, acknowledge it, but then. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, somebody's going to have a bigger reaction to it. I, ha I have only had this once or twice happen Same. so far. Mm -hmm. um, I'm checking in with you. The line of communication is open both ways, you know, to talk through it, come back, we'll figure it out. Most of the time, it's because they didn't do the salt bath or drink enough water. I can't stay that enough. enough. Um, but there are things that people have really tackled in their life that are that are massive, and and I honor that um, that in this work there there is an uh, an opportunity to face that and flush it out. So the best thing I can say is if you can just endure the short period of time that it might take to feel those emotions come up and over you, just endure it for this short period of time so that then you can be forever free of it. Forever free tagline. Uh, so where can everybody find you, book a session with you, where you located? Mm -hmm. What's the rundown? So I run Aligned Energy Medicine out of A Touch of Meraki in Gig Harbor, Washington. And we are very near the marina. We're sitting right now in the gather space adjacent to the treatment rooms. And you can book and learn more and explore at alignedenergymedicine.com. Thank you so much. Do you want to take us out with yeah, let's use my favorite oh. Eddie excuse to hear it. Are you ready? <gasps> I'm so ready. If you're curious, this is a D. In me, around me. Ooh. Ah. Yes. <laughs> okay. There you go. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you guys so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye.